Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for a long overdue return to Heroes of Normandy. Now I'm going to begin this video in the typically British way with an apology. Um, those of you who've been following my Heroes of Normandy strand will remember that about a month ago I uploaded a video about the uh, plane carnage scenario and I initiated what proved to be a very short playthrough um, where I used the German forces as given in the scenario um, matched up against Lord Lovett's commandos. Now, I quite enjoyed making that video and even enjoyed what I thought was my humiliating defeat on turn one. The critical error I made, of course, which was very rapidly pointed out to me, was that it is impossible for a scenario to be won and or lost on turn one. So, with due apologies for the time it's taken me, because I, I did resolve very soon after that that I would, I would do this, I have painstakingly reconstructed the situation as it stood at the end of turn one because I intend to make full use of the uh, the second chance that Lovett's commandos have been given to try to win this scenario. Now, of course, uh, the great thing about plain carnage is it's very simple, it's very straightforward, and it can get quite intense because everything hinges on possession of that victory location. So just to talk you through what's happened because obviously it's it's been a month and i don't want you to have to go through the agony of watching the previous video again um it is the start of turn 2 and just to zoom in on the forces so you have a slightly clearer idea of what's happening i will come round to the german side first now let's see what is going on here so um, the Germans had been pretty bold. They advanced one of their recon groups all the way up to the um, field fortification there, which causes me problems because they now dominate that bit of the field. One of their fire groups is actually sitting on the objective. So by the end of this turn, I either need to be contesting that or I need to have pushed them off it. Because my other big worry is that their tank has rumbled up to give support. And behind those units are a German Panzerschreck group, another fire group, another fire group on their right flank with their officer. And, uh, of course, in the very last um, uh, uh, part of turn one, they played... Hitler Jugend to revive a recon group which I'd eliminated uh, as the British during the turn. Now to switch round and see what the British are up to. Actually I'll just move this a bit further up. The British deployment is much more straightforward partly because there's fewer of us um, but there's effectively a line um, with a, a deployed Vickers heavy machine gun, two fire teams a support team over there, the bazookas moving up into the hedge because they want to be in a position to take a shot at the German tank. Uh, and lastly, uh, Lovett himself is over there. Right at the back there is the British mortar team. There's no real reason for them to move because they can lob mortar rounds um, from where they are quite comfortably, so there's no need for them to risk themselves. So as for the broader situation, the British have the initiative this turn because the Germans had it last turn, which may or may not be a good thing. We'll have to see. Um, let's see if I can centre the board without losing too much detail. And just a reminder about the forces engaged. The Germans are bringing along uh, grenades as their gear. The British have extra ammo. Um, both sides have drawn and discarded cards, so the British hand looks like this. They've, they've got Tactician, which is great. They also have Battle Rage, which is also good because there's hopefully going to be some close combat swirling around down here. They do have Confusion, which may help. And they've also got speed set up, which may or may not be useful. It depends. Their, their Vickers is set up now, and it has a good sweep over the battlefield. So let's see what happens there. 
Um, the Germans, and as a reminder, I'm not using the solo mode with this game. I'm playing both sides as if it's human players. The Germans have communication scrambled, which will help them. Um, hit the dirt, very useful defensive card, as is thank the helmet. And lastly, relay, which should help them to, uh, well, hopefully they won't have to play this card from their perspective, but you never know. You never know. It's handy to have it just in case they suffer losses. Uh, now, again, the Germans start this turn dominating the um, objective, so I really have to get someone there as the British or, or at least shift them off it. Um, there is also this unclaimed bonus up here, uh, which is a bit annoying for both sides because it's tantalisingly within reach for the British, but there's a whopping great German tank there. Equally, if the Germans make a dash for it, there's a growing amount of British power in the area, so it is a bit chancy. And it's also a distraction from the real objective down here. So, to the orders phase. Now, it may seem at first glance that the German movement of one of their fire groups out into the open like that, very early in the game, might have been a bit of a risky, almost silly move. But actually, I think it's really clever because the effect it has had on turn two is that whatever clever plans the British were entertaining, they're pretty much out of the window now. All their efforts have to be focused on the removal um, of that fire group through whatever means. So, in effect, the Germans have bought themselves a turn of, I'll say, relative British disarray um, simply by moving that unit forward. And of course, if the British fail, if that unit is still standing um, at the end of the turn and the British have expended all their actions firing the closest units or, you know, similarly activating them so that they can't move in the supply phase, then the game really is over. So the Germans are actually in quite a strong position, but let's see what happens. So the British, of course, are going to play tactician at the start of the orders phase. They, they really need this. So they now have a total of four order tokens that they can dish out. Hmm, the question is, what do they want to do with them? Um, I think it is a bit of a no-brainer that they are going to want to do something about that fire group as a matter of urgency. So they're going to give their first order to this fire team. And the temptation really, given that they have this battle rage card, is to um, is to just go forward and engage in close combat. Although that said, if they move, they will trigger a opportunity fire response from that German recon group if it decides to do that. So they may have to think about that one. Now, the second order token probably best go to that fire team adjacent to them, just in case. And maybe the third one, possibly, should go to, hmm, maybe the bazooka team. They do need to get into position. And what of the fourth one? Oh, actually, no, there isn't a fourth one because it's Lord Lovett with his autonomy. Um, rat. So I'm going to lay number four on Lord Lovett. Um, and the British are just going to have to do without their mortar team this turn. That's a bit of a shame. Um, the other great loss they're feeling is the, the silence from the Vickers machine gun. They would really love to have its support, but it's probably more important to use the fire teams. But what are the Germans going to do? They don't have any um, order bonuses uh, from their hand this turn, but they do have their... Uh, 
they do have the three orders generated by their force. Um, the most obvious one, perhaps, should be the recon group, because if the British don't do anything that triggers opportunity fire mode, it's probably a good idea to make use of that unit's proximity to cause trouble for them. I would say it's probably next best for them to activate their tank. And their third combat order should probably go to the fire group, because if it still exists, depending on what the British attempt to do to it, it should get a chance to get its kick in. I mean, the rest of the German units need to come in too, but from where they are, they're better off functioning, <clears throat> functioning as reserves more than anything else. And lastly, just to be really cruel, the Germans are going to end the orders phase by playing their communication scrambled card, which is unfortunately going to mess things up for the British somewhat. Now, in theory, they don't know what units have been given what order. Um, so playing this as honestly as I can, if I was the German player, I would be most suspicious of that fire team over there. So I am going to use the communication scrambled to remove that order token. And you can almost hear the cursing from the British side of the board. But what can you do, unfortunately? Um, so, having removed that order token, the, the British have effectively been deprived of their first move because that was their order number one. Uh, that is not good. That's not good at all. So, the Germans activate number one, which is their recon group. Now, they find themselves in a bit of a target-rich environment here. But the most obvious unit for them to shoot at is the fire team right in front of them that has a um, uh, an order token on it. So they're going to do that. They have a fire strength of plus one. And the British, they need a five or better to damage the fire team. So they make their shot. They roll a two. Unfortunately for them, despite the fact that the Brits are out in the open, that's not enough to do anything. So they've expended their move. Over to the British. Now, I would have been a bit reticent about assaulting them if they hadn't done that. Because of their opportunity fire, that could have got rather messy. But my fire team is capable of assault, and they're merely a recon team, so I am tempted to take that defensive position by storm, um, despite the defensive bonus that they have. So I am going to go for it. British are going to activate unit number two, and they're going to assault. And they are going to play Battle Rage, which gives them a plus two to the dice roll. Now, this is quite powerful in the hands of commandos because they already have a plus one to their assault rating. So because they have the assault rating, they roll two dice. It's a total of plus three with Battle Rage. Um, and also they get an additional plus two because of their anti-infantry rating. So that's plus five. The highest number they roll is a four. So that's nine altogether. Now, before I proceed with this, I'm just going to double check the German cards. Um, hit the dirt is no good because that defends against shooting. Um... Ah, and thank the helmet cannot be used during an assault. Sorry, guys, literally no dice. So the Germans will roll anyway. They roll a five plus one for six. But unfortunately, the British win with the higher total of nine. So despite a fairly stalwart defense, that poor recon group is swept aside. And the triumphant British commandos storm into the entrenchment. 
and take it. Unfortunately for them, that has brought them squarely into the sights of that German tank over there, uh, which isn't looking at them very kindly. Uh, now, the German tank has a choice of targets. It can either engage that unit or it can engage the support team that's sitting pretty up there. Um, although it's tempting to plink at the support team, the Germans do want to try and ensure that their fire group here has a fairly easy time. So they will try and damage the fire team there. Yes, I know that, that they've already gone, but um, it's one step closer to, to weakening the British force. So, the Germans are going to go for it. There's no need for the tank to move, because then it can use its full weapon ratings. Um, so it's going to start with its heavy weapon, which has an infantry anti-infantry rating of only plus one. Um and it needs a 7 to damage the commandos because they're in the entrenchments. You never know, they might roll a 6. Nope, they roll a 1. They're going to try with their machine guns next, and that's a much better rating at a plus 4. And they get a total of 8, which is enough. So they rake the position with machine gun fire. And that poor commando fire team is flipped to its reduced side. So they sort of got what they wanted there. However, with the tank distracted, the bazooka team is now going to move into the hedgerow. And they're also, while they're moving, going to flip to their concealed side so that that tank cannot see them. That puts them in a beautiful position to draw bead on it next turn. And that brings us neatly to the German fire group. They are going to hold their position. And they are going to try and bring fire down on that fire team over there. It makes more sense because they're out in the open... And while that Vickers machine gun is very powerful, they present the biggest future threat to a German victory because if they're left alone, they'll be able to come forward during the supply phase and contest German possession of this hex. So they get a plus two to their dice roll. And they get a six. That is a very good shot. So fire from the German fire group tears into their British opposite numbers inflicting losses and things are not looking great for the British there now I could also have throw I could have opted to throw a grenade instead of firing that may have been the more sensible thing to do but for the moment I want to conserve the grenades for the German side because that that could have been a bit awkward. I did also have... Um, I also remember that I have got ammo stocks for the British. But we've so far just had an assault. And um, so there's been no real opportunity to use them. Uh, finally, we have Lovett. He's not doing much good back there. And to be honest, I don't really know what to do with him. But the temptation is, if I can rely on my other units to keep the German tank busy, I think I will move Lovett forward into the entrenchment. Because then that puts him in a good position to beef up the reduced fire team there. And just to try and make sure that the... Uh, um, the the lives of any Germans who try and advance into this open space are rendered really difficult. And that ends the orders phase. 
So I hope I've made the right decision there. I hope, for the British sake, they now have opportunity fire um, that two units can benefit from, which will help. And also, their anti-tank capability is where it should be to try and take on that monster over there. So it's the supply phase. I am going to be bold and I'm going to move this support team forward. Might as well move them slightly forward that way to try and um, try and claim whatever that is. And also it distracts the Germans because if they don't turn their attention to me next turn, they're letting me have whatever that is. Um, similarly, because we've absolutely got to... <laughs> My poor depleted fire team is going to advance and try and contest that hex. Sorry, contest that victory space. Um, what are the Germans going to do? The Germans decide, given how much is riding on this in their supply phase. Um, oh, by the way, I'm leaving the mortars where they are for now. They're going to go all in. Now, what are they going to do with the units up here? I think they're going to keep the recon group, the Oberleutnant, um, where they are. But just to make things very bloody for the British, they're going to bring out their fire group and place them right alongside. So that is still contested at the end of the supply phase. So there we go. It's going to be a very interesting turn three. And I have a horrible feeling the Germans may, will, may well win this one anyway, given the amount of force they're grouping onto the objective there. But let's see what happens. Okay, so it's the start of turn three. Oh, before I do that, let me just sort out everyone's cards. Um, I think the British will keep those two just in case. Well, they've got relay, which may help. Ah, burst into action. That is a very useful card, and hopefully they'll get a chance to use it. What about the Germans? They're actually quite happy with these three because they are useful in their own way. And they'll just take that. That could be useful if the tank gets itself knocked about. So it's the start of turn three and the question is what orders are the Germans going to give to their units? Now, somewhat counterintuitively, um, actually, no. Um, it might be quite fun to do something with the Panzer Schreck group, but they have a really lousy anti infantry rating. So it's actually better to just, with all due respect, guys, use them to help occupy the space and just soak up British fire. The. Um, First order, probably better go to that fire group there, or at least the one that had the honour of first occupying the space. Um, as for the British, this is a difficult one, because there's a good chance that unit will be eliminated. But if it is not, they will want to be um, firing. But I'll think about that later. I'll just do the rest of the German orders for now. I think hoping that that's going to be a foregone conclusion, it would be well worth the Germans' while to focus an effort up there. Um, and perhaps, apologies to the tank this turn, just as insurance, they'll give order number three to that fire group over there. Um, going back to the British, sorry, I got a bit ahead of myself over there. 
Um, yes. In the hope that they survive, the First Order token will go to that fire team. Now, given that the Germans are unlikely to conduct any movement, I think we'll do the... Um, Oh, this is a very tough decision. The second order really ought to go to the Vickers machine gun team. They need to start damaging the German units over there. And if necessary, perhaps even live dangerously and move forward to contest the uh, position. And the third one... Hmm... Third one really ought to go to that support team up there if they're to successfully contest that square. So we have uh, the scene is set for a fairly bloody confrontation. Um, oh, wait, no, they can't because I'm stuck giving that last one to uh, to Lord Lovett because that that counts as his autonomy. That's uh, it's just to remind myself that I'm going to give him an order. It's worth having him do something. And I suppose he can still shoot at that unit. Or perhaps even he can target that one if needs be. Which would free up that fire team to shoot at that one. While the Vickers takes care of the Panzer Shreks. The British are depending on an awful lot going right here. So... Nobody's going to be interrupting anyone else's orders. I don't think. No. So, first activation for the Germans. This fire group, it's a bit of a no-brainer. They are going to... Actually, what are they going to do? They could... Um... They could throw in an assault, but that would count as a movement, and there's some itchy opportunity fire fingers waiting there. So no, they're going to hold their position and just pour fire into the British. So their firepower is plus two. They roll a three. Unfortunately for the British, that is exactly what the Germans needed. So that British fire team is eliminated. And of course, that group that was eliminated was the British first group, so their turn is skipped. Um, so it means German, the German fire group up here gets to go next. Now, they have a choice of targets. They could try to hit Lord Lovett, or they could try to hit the support team right next to them. It's a bit of a tough choice, but... I would say from their perspective, the British support team there constitutes the far greater threat. So they're going to open fire. Um, the the Brits are pretty good at assault. So, and again, there's itchy trigger fingers waiting for somebody to move on the German side. So, um, oh wait, hang on. Before I do that... Before I do that, I'm going to play Relay. Sorry to interrupt your turn, Germans, but I just remembered, thankfully no dice had been rolled yet. I can transfer order token number one to the fire team over here. So they are going to activate. And they have a clear line of sight, so... Hmm, the question is, who do they shoot at? They're going to shoot at the fire group that hasn't activated yet, because they do have a line of sight to it. So they have a firepower rating of plus one. Now the Germans have a bit of a choice, because they do have hit the dirt... And they also have Thank the Helmet. The question is, do they want to use either of these? Uh, 
the British are going to play an ammo token to boost the fire of their fire team to plus two. So the Germans are, given that that unit has already fired and it uh, won't really matter, they're going to hit the dirt to up their defence by plus two. So the British need six or better to hit and they have a plus two. Oh wait, sorry, it's that group. So yes, they would have done that anyway. So let's make the British roll because they want them to be able to do something. And the British roll a six, which is not bad. It's actually very lucky that the German fire group played hit the dirt because uh, had they not done so, they might well have been eliminated because that would have doubled their defensive factor. As it is, although it saves them from destruction, they earn a suppression marker for it because, uh, as the card implies, they're hugging the dirt now. So it has damaged them and it's rendered them somewhat less effective. Trouble is, was it worth it? Because we've not really eliminated anyone as such. The British have just weakened the German position down there. So, apologies to German Group 2. Now you can take your turn. Uh, the British, having realised just in time that they had a relay card they could use. Um, so, the German fire group here is going to pour some shots into their British opposite numbers. Um, ah, no, I'm going to interrupt them again. Sorry, Germans, I'm really not on the ball today. Because that unit received a suppressed marker, the British are going to play Confusion, which causes them to lose their order token. So that was actually quite an effective attack. So effectively, the, the British have halted whatever the Germans were going to do with their units down here. But again, the problem is they've not eliminated them and the Germans are very strongly holding that position there. OK, I promise you guys now you can actually take your turn. <laughs> so they are going to any British response, any British response, no. Any more British card play? No? Okay. They actually are going to fire at the support team this time. And they roll a six for a total of eight. Thank goodness for the defensive rating of five, or we would have had another elimination there. So that poor support team is broken up very badly. But at least it's still there. So, British Group 2, it's the Vickers machine gun. Now, partly because they're in the way, I want to go... Oh, I don't know. The trouble is, I've given these fellows an order. Um... So I can either shoot with them or I can pack them up and move them there. But that would be suicidal. But then if I don't do it, we've lost the game. Right, I think. Because I believe this card allows it. I'm going to have the Vickers machine gun team burst into action. They're going to open fire and then they're going to move. Because you can shoot before, during or after your movement. Now the action's obviously not going to end in an assault, but they're going to go absolutely crazy. And, uh, and open fire on the Panzer Shrek unit. So they've got firepower of plus four and they roll a two for a total of six. 
Um, the Panzer Shrek unit takes the hits, but thank the helmet, they get to ignore the result and just get a suppressed marker instead. That was not what I wanted at all. And I'm just going to pack the Vickers up <laughs> and in a gesture of complete insanity, run these poor lads forward. Okay, the Germans have lost their token for group three, but Lord Lovett still has his. Um, now things are really desperate down there. So Lovett, who does have line of sight to that German fire group, is going to take a shot at it. And he is hoping that he does something. He has plus two firepower and he rolls a six for a total of eight. Now that is stupendous. We've been getting a lot of sixes this game because it doubles the um, defensive strength of the German unit and they are out in the open. So that unit is eliminated outright, which is fantastic news for the British. It may have just got slightly easier to hold this position. Uh, and that is the end of the activation phase. So, moving on to supply. We'll start with the Germans since they uh, it's their initiative this turn. Uh, the suppression markers go from these two, these two units here. Question is, what do the Germans want to do now? I think there's no doubt they want to move these guys up. And they do want to bring um, their officer up. But they do also want to keep him safe because he generates two thirds of their command points. The tank is probably all right where it is. They're still wary of that um, that British um, bazooka team, but they also know that the Brits really have to focus their efforts down here. So they're happy with that. The British, I'll just collect up everyone's order tokens. What are the British going to do? They've moved. They probably want to stay where they are. I would just say the mortar team will move forward here just in case it finds itself needing to make a suicidal dash for the objective. So, cards. The Germans are still happy with those two, so they're just going to draw another two. The British owe themselves three. They'll keep speed set up just in case, as long as they still have the um, the Vickers heavy machine gun unit. Ah, oh, that could be handy. Oh, that is very handy. So, start of turn four. It's the orders phase of turn four, and it's the British initiative. So we have two orders, and Lord Lovett is autonomous. So what are we going to do? Well, I think it's obvious that that Vickers machine gun team must try and do something, even if it's fighting very ineffectually before they go under. Um, and I think the same goes for um, 
the reduced fire team and Lovett because again I don't see much movement happening during the combat phase so in a sense the opportunity fire is not likely to be needed. Um, I just have to accept that the rest of my units are going to suffer pretty horribly. What about the Germans? Um, they've got lots of choices too. Difficult ones that they have to make. Um, again, a bit of a no-brainer. These units here are going to have to do stuff. And it it really doesn't matter what order, although it might actually. Again, because of opportunity, fire and movement. Maybe the recon group should go first. Followed by the fire group. There's not actually much point them using their Panzer Shrek group because their close combat and their anti-infantry rating is terrible. And it's really better just to leave them as a placeholder. But what about the third order? It's probably about time the Germans brought their tank back into play because that thing is in a position to do some damage and help ensure that the... Um, that the British clear off from this area. They've slightly lost interest in what's going on up here because of the main prize to be had down there. So for the British, they're going to play at the end of the orders phase. They're going to get their own back for the earlier turn and play communication scrambled. And again, not knowing um, in theory which number uh, which number order has been assigned to which German units. It's going to be a bit of a guess. Now, if I were the British player, simply because it has the option of assault, I would guess that the fire group there is the more dangerous enemy. And so I would remove that order token from them. German player probably growl with frustration but have to accept it so that fire group loses its order token and so we move on to the the start of the British turn the Germans have no cards that they wish to play during the orders phase so starting with my Vickers machine gun team I'm going to expend an ammo token And I'm also going to use Bullet Storm. So that's a total of plus two, because the British really, really want to eliminate that unit. So they'll roll the dice, and they get a six again. Goodness, I might have to change these dice, because that's, a, that's an unreasonable amount of sixes the Brits have got in this game. Um, so six plus, yep, yeah, that's a total of eight. Um, which wipes out the recon group. So that's the start of a bit of a bad turn for the Germans because they've lost the other recon group, which means they lost the, they lose their unit that had the um, order token number one. And so the Brits get to move straight to number two. Now the only problem the Brits have now is that their Vickers machine gun team is blocking the view of the um, is blocking the view of that um, fire team over there, which is not very helpful. Now the tricky question is, what do the Brits do about it? They could try advancing into the space to try and muscle in. In fact, if they wanted to be really mean, they could. Yes, they could assault the German Panzer Schreck unit. So they're going to step out of their entrenchments and throw in an assault. Uh, the Germans don't have any cards that can halt that, so the Brits get plus two altogether for the assault. They're going to roll their two dice and their higher roll is a four, so that's a total of six. 
the Panzer Shrek group doesn't have the assault capability, so they roll a dice and add zero. And they only get a two, unfortunately. So that eliminates them. It's getting very bloody down there now. And the fire team occupies the position. So it's all very much in the balance now. Now the really tempting idea for the Brits is that they could... They could have Lord Lovett go down there now and try and do the same nasty thing to the remnants of that German fire group. But the trouble is, he doesn't have moving fire, so this would have to be an assault, which is a bit risky. And if Lord Lovett loses, the British lose the game, because that would take their whole command structure out of commission. The question is, do the British want to risk it? I'm tempted to say no, because... The German officer is waiting in the wings there. The Germans still have other units that they could bring in, and it, it's a bit too chancy. Plus, I have two units there now to the German one, so maybe it's more secure than I think it is. Mind you, I wouldn't like to swear to it. No, I think what Lovett's going to do is try and help his other units out by firing at that German um, fire group over there. So he gets a plus two, and he rolls a two for four. It's exactly what he wanted in terms of meeting um, their total, so they are flipped to their damaged side, and that's been a bit of an equaliser over there now. And that does bring the British turn to an end. Now, the German tank is extremely displeased at these developments and it's going to pick on the most obvious target so it's going to try and use its main gun on the Vickers team gets a plus one on its anti-infantry rating and it rolls a three for four not quite good enough but it's now going to bring its machine guns into play as well and it rolls a one that's very unlucky for a total of five However, five was exactly what it wanted to wipe out the Vickers machine gun crew. So that's balanced the losses a little bit. The uh, um, Both forces are getting perilously thin now. So we get to the supply phase. The Brits are not going to make any changes to their dispositions because the mortar team is still close enough to dash in if needs be. And the only other British units that could do anything useful, the, the bazooka team, we want to keep them there because at some point they'd like to try odds with that German tank. And that support team up there wants to carry on contesting that... Um, that supply crate or that bonus crate. On the German side, the situation's not yet desperate enough for them to commit their officer. They still have the fire group down there. They still have the tank in support and they still have a fire group which they want to keep there because they don't want to just give the British that crate. So the turn ends on a bit of a... It, Things are incredibly tense right now, let's put it that way. So let's see what the British get. They do want to keep those cards. Uh, actually, no, they don't want speed set up anymore because they don't really need it. Uh, well, their Vickers is gone now, so they might as well draw and see what they get. Hmm, not bad at all. What about the Germans? Um, with the loss of their recon unit, Sneaky Shot has no role to play. Um, the other three are still useful. 
really need to remember that they've got that, the uh, relay card, because I probably could have used it earlier. Sorry, Germans, that was a bit bad of me. Um, but they have got the initiative now, which, well, they've got the card that uh, grants them a bit of initiative when they need it. So, that brings us to the end of turn four. So things are looking very difficult for turn uh sorry for both sides as we get into the beginning of turn 5. I'm going to have to wrap the video up here for the moment, but I will film the second part which will be the concluding part as soon as possible uh and hopefully upload the two in quick succession. Um so it just remains to say I hope you've enjoyed this uh, it's not really a rematch it's a continuation of the film I last left a month ago. Um it's been very interesting to see how things have played out. Um I hope I've been as balanced to both sides as I possibly can. Um and we'll see how it ends. I mean, both sides have made quite a mess of each other. I can see why this scenario is called plain carnage, because once that objective that's out in the middle of nowhere, there's no cover in those four squares, it begins sucking forces in. And, um, and the casualties mount up horrifically. Uh, and of course, this is going to remain the focus of the battlefield, because as the main fighting units of both sides have been churned up and spat out as casualties. Both Brits and Germans are going to have to begin pulling in their support troops to uh, to try and sort that out. Um, if necessary, the Germans may end up having to throw their tank in, in in an increasingly desperate way to see what can be done. And there's only two turns left to do it. So we shall see what happens in the next video. In the meantime, thank you all for following this series, and uh, again, apologies for the one-month gap between videos. I'll try not to let such a wide, yawning gap open up again. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been interesting. As ever, any comments, tactical suggestions, positive and negative, are very welcome. And I'd just like to say before I sign off that, as always, I really appreciate your company on these. Um, it's great fun making these videos, and I really hope that you get some enjoyment out of them too. Um, do take care, and I do look forward to seeing you all in the next video, which will be the concluding part. Bye!